If you were in awe as much as I was when Steve Jobs announced dual processors in the MacBook Pro. Which means that there are going to be dual processors in every MacBook Pro. And this is the video for you. It's a very famous line that Steve Jobs did during the presentation of the first of the uh, new Intel MacBook Pros back in 2006. Dual processors in a laptop. It was finally possible with the Core Duo MacBook Pro. It was a bit misleading because quite frankly it was still a single CPU but with two cores. The same thing they did with the last of the Power Mac G5s where they crammed two cores and one CPU and then put two CPUs in the board for a quad core Mac Pro. We're still more of a quad core than the FX 4100 of AMD <laughs> six years later ever would be but yeah, it's a different story for another day. In this video we're going to take a look at the 17 inch MacBook Pro. This is a 2006 model but it does not have a core duo it has a core 2 duo so it's vastly more useful and has more software support because it has 64-bit capabilities. It's uh, in very decent condition, as you could probably tell. Here we have some more light to shine on it. It has no dents in its top casing. It is not overly scratched. It rattles a little bit because I've been inside it. We have a battery which still holds a charge. Bottom is a little bit scratched up and needs some new feet. Uh, and that's a small dent there. But other than that, it's in decent condition. I always wanted one of these. They never were uh, within my budget. And as I alluded to in an earlier video, I don't like to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds on a machine like this just for collection purposes. So I just want to uh, keep my eye out for a decent machine for a decent price. This is a good blend between decent condition and a decent price point, I would say. So. That's why I got this machine. I always wanted one of these 17-inch ones because it's absolute behemoth and this is way more collectible than 15-inch models will ever be. And this being a late 2006 that does not have the uh, permadeath uh, 8600M GT graphics card in it, this will probably last a couple more years. So uh, that's nice as well. So let's take the outside tour of the machine and that scratch noise. I apologize for that. Again, no feet. So. Eh. On the left-hand side, we have a slightly chewed out uh, MagSafe port. I do intend to uh, sand that down a little bit, make the edges a bit more uh, smooth. It still charges just fine, so no problems there. Two USB 2.0 ports, line in, and a headphone jack. We have an Express Card 34 slot, which is currently occupied with a, a two-port USB 3 adapter. And yes, that does work on a Mac OS. I'll show that in a little bit. On the back we have nothing except some chewed out rubber coating, which will die a couple the next couple years. On the right hand side of the machine, we have a full size dual link DVI port, capable of driving the back then very amazing 30 inch cinema display, gigabit ethernet, FireWire 800, FireWire 400, another USB 2, Kensington lock port there. All right. On the front we have an optical drive. We have the button to uh, push the screen up and an IR blaster here. We have a glossy display so I will not open it up any further because so you don't have to look at my ugly mug all the time. So things I did to this machine. Um, it needed some uh, some minor work. I uh, replaced the SSD that was in it. I already had an SSD. It was an OCZ Agility 3 remember those from back in the day. It's an absolute chunky boy. In fact, I'll just get it. There we go. It's quite uh, thick with two C's, as they all put it. In fact, one of my, my very first SSD I ever used back in the day was from OCZ as well. It was the um, Vertex 3 rather than the Agility. Agility was the was the budget division, more or less, and the Vertex was their high-end. You've sent force controls, they were pretty quick, but they were somewhat unreliable, especially the Vertex 2s. Um, but other than that, 
pretty decent SSDs. The reason I replaced the SSDs is because I wanted more capacity, because this is a multi-boot laptop. I have a couple of different operating systems on there. Currently all Mac OS, by the way. Um, but yeah, 60 gig is not going to cut it, so I put in a cheap 240 gig uh, Kingston A400. I think it was an A400. It was 240 gig, it was 17 whole damn euros, which is very cheap. And I figured it would be a good upgrade. The RAM in this machine was already maxed out to 4 gigabytes, um, but the Intel 945 chipset in this will only address 3 gigs and a bit. So, you know, that's a bit of a shame. It has the ATI X1600 graphics inside of it. I believe in this version it has 256 megabytes. We'll check that once we're in macOS. In fact, we'll just boot it up in the background. There we go. Optical drive made a noise. I replaced the optical drive, it was stone dead. In this machine it was actually quite easy to replace, contrary to a 12-inch uh, powerbook, which is a nightmare. And already booted up, so that's how quick it is. Um, this also has a backlit keyboard, which was by which was standard on the MacBook Pros. It has uh, the iSoc webcam, which was standard on the MacBook Pros. It has 802.11n Wi-Fi. It had the draft specification as soon as the machine came out. Uh, was later officially certified for N, so it got new firmware, and then it was 300 megabit, uh, 2.4 gigahertz capable, which is decent for the time at least. Uh, also has Bluetooth, obviously. And uh, I upgraded with the USB 3.0. Now the current operating system, which well, you'll definitely be able to notice. Let's put the brightness up a little bit. There we go. Still pretty decently bright display, 1680 uh, by 1050. Was it 1650? I always forget. It's a 16 by 10 resolution, 17 inch display, 1680 1050 with millions of colors. And this is its original uh, operating system. Not the original restore image, because I didn't have that. And when we zoom in, we have a 2.33 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, four gigs of RAM, macOS Tiger 10.4.11, also known as the worst supported Intel version of macOS that Apple ever made. Because there is basically no software for this. Most of the software that exists for Tiger is PowerPC or Universal Binary, but no Intel native. I put in a new battery in this machine as well because the uh, original battery was actually not included, it didn't have a battery. And uh, one of the most common things on these things is for the battery to swell up and explode, usually also killing the trackpad. Luckily for the, the previous owner did not actually made it that worse or that bad so the machine ended up working just fine without a battery got a charger with it it was a fake one hello is my ugly mug and uh yeah it's honestly fine so let's boot into the main operating system on this machine which is not os 10. oh there we go that was siri the main operating system on this machine is not mac os tiger it's not leopard it's not any of those. It is Mavericks. There we go. And you might say, well, you're a cheater. This machine cannot run OS X Mavericks. And you're absolutely right. But it's still running OS X Mavericks. In fact, let's get a zoom on again. And we put it in the middle of the screen here. We have a MacBook Pro 17-inch Core 2 Duo with the best Core 2 Duo that was available at the time, which is the T7600, 4 gigs of RAM, the 256 MB X1600, like I said before, and we have OS X 10.9.5. And yes, iMessage does in fact still work on Mavericks, and it does work on this machine, despite not supporting Mavericks and not supporting FaceTime and iMessage at all, officially. Well, I guess it sort of does, because the official latest version that can run on this is uh, OS X Lion, which is a disaster in and of itself. And it could also run uh, Mountain Lion with the same patcher I used to install Mavericks. Shout out to Parrot Geek, 
which I've uh, shown before his uh, tutorials on my channel for installing mountain line on unsupported Macs. I'll put it up in the little card uh, above so you can take a look at that tutorial for mountain lion. It also applies to Mavericks in some of the same ways. Mavericks is a little bit easier uh, because you can just run a script, create a patch to install or and just go from there. I actually found the Mavericks install to be uh, a lot less uh, work than the mountain lion install was, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, to get back to the fact that I actually installed a USB 3 card in a 2006 Mac and it actually works. Um, on the screen right now, you probably can't tell, there is a little icon there for USB controller because it's in a card slot. And if we go to about this Mac to the system overview here, why did I bother to zoom out? I don't know. We can zoom in again. And what we can see, dragging this down to the middle of the screen, we have a USB 3 high speed bus and USB 3 super speed bus. The super speed is, of course, USB 3.0 spec. And we can uh, actually put a drive in there that is USB 3 capable. We have one here. It's a USB 3 hard disk. I'll put the extra power that it needs in a USB 2 port and we'll put the USB 3 in the USB 3 port. And it should, in theory, pop up on our desktop. And it does because it is the next post facto install disk that I actually formatted. And it contains our should have contained a restore image for this machine from Maverick, so I actually didn't quite get around to do that yet. But we have a fully working USB 3 controller in our 2006 17-inch MacBook Pro, which is very cool. Now, a couple of reasons why I really like these machines. First of all, again, the design. This is absolutely my favorite design Apple ever did. It's also a reason why I still have a 2008 Mac Pro laying around. It's just that that industrial aluminum design from back in the day really gets my gears going in a good way and um, yeah really enjoy using them as well and this machine is remarkably quick for an old machine like this it really doesn't quite feel like it's uh, se almost 17 years old just launching programs it's just as quick in uh, well, there's a little bit of a latency but it's it feels almost as quick as uh, as a modern machine Well, the web page is fine, including all the various ads. This is a somewhat modern version of Firefox. It's, you know, here we go. We're rendering CNN.com just fine. We all know how terrible this is on a PowerPC machine. On this, it's absolutely smooth as all butter. You can go to YouTube.com. Here we can watch the highlights of the Australian GP in Formula One. Actually, watched that before recording this video, which is decent. The only downside of this um, Mavericks install is it uses a modded X1600 ATI driver, which means that the UI will flicker in the player. But if you put it up to full screen, that's not much of an issue. Here we go, here we can see the various video going. It's now at 480p, we can put it at 1080p 50 and it should still play fine. Here's my ugly mug again. And here my assumption completely falls apart that it could do 1080p 50. Uh, let's put it 720p. I guess 1080p 30 was more up its alley. Yeah, there we go. That one, that runs fine. Yep, now it's picking up speed. That's working okay. So yeah, it's perfectly usable for everyday tasks like watching YouTube videos. And I guess that's more or less the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you 
tune in for more of these mech shenanigans. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.